Good hello, thanks for watching another random palm reading. This person would like me to tell them all about their success and happiness. And it's an interesting question in itself. I very rarely get asked about happiness. Will I be happy? Most people ask, will I be rich? And I've had a look at these hands this morning and I've I've seen a few things already that uh, really require a bit of investigation. The, Ju uh, the Apollo finger on the left hand here appears a little bit short uh, when compared to the right. It's still not altogether long. I mean, it's just about long enough. And the reason why I sort of made a beeline for the Apollo finger was because it is the finger of joy and happiness and what makes us successful. And her question is literally around success in happiness. So today in this reading, I'll be looking around the Apollo mount and the Apollo finger and what this can tell us. The sun line or the success line or Apollo line is predominantly where we look to uh, examine and analyze potential present and future happiness and success. And already I see a few interesting key features here. We've got some sort of horizontal obstacle here and notice the heart line sort of, it comes to sort of strike at the fate line. It branches downwards as a branch offwards and and already I, I I think I know what this is, but before I get into that, I just want to explain here a little bit about what the uh, the shape of the palm and the fingers is, is is displaying here in conjunction with some of the palmer features. So already a, an immensely long mercury finger. It's it's a tremendously long mercury finger, and it's a good thickness as well. It's a good width as well. Um, and I notice a bit of a square going on here on the second phalanx. That's very interesting. Now, I know what this means or what this could mean, but I'm going to save this because it's extremely important to uh, filter through the more complex uh, Palmer information, the markings, through what we know about a person's character. Um, and, and, and this is because that initial template can provide us uh, with uh, more accuracy later on. Now, this is an energetic hand, and I say that because there is a, a, a sort of a triangular shape to the palm. It, lunar appears to drop down slightly, and Saturn and Jupiter are, are at its highest. Mercury is very low set. Uh, the thumb is very strong. There's a good length to the fingers. We have... Uh, a fire hand, just about. And the not energetic hands are spatulate in nature. They are wider at the uh, top than at the bottom. And also the fingers themselves can sort of splay outwards like a sort of a spade shape. And, and this sort of spatulate shape is for stands for action. Energetic hands are liable to burning themselves out. They have a fast metabolism. And if they don't eat well, then they can, um, you know, become prone to health issues uh, if they don't look after themselves. They're just workaholics, basically. Energetic hands tend to have a lifeline that sort of swings confidently outwards uh, away from Venus into the, the wider world, showing off what they're worth uh, to the outside. Uh, and interestingly here we have, and you might well have already noticed, this is actually a doubling of the lifeline. And curiously, this lifeline does swing out, not until later, later on it seems. I sort of stalled a little bit there because I was wondering whether or not this line comes up to meet the lifeline, in which direction this line was heading. And the way in which we determine that is by assessing where the line is at its strongest. Now, this line certainly comes from Luna, this fate line here, uh, and it rises upwards, and we see that because it's blatantly uh, much stronger down here. But this line here, certainly a bit trickier to assess because it does appear to come from the lifeline, it strengthens, and as it reaches down in towards Pluto, it appears to sort of become more faint. Now, I'm just trying to assess what this could mean by uh, looking at the right hand as well. And it it definitely is a line coming from the lifeline. I've just picked Ava up here because she's getting a bit lonely on the floor. 
And what I believe this represents is travel in later life, but it's directly linked. As, uh, there's quite a bit going on here, so I need to sort of dissect what this means and come back to it a little bit. I'm going to have to put you back on the floor. Well, in a, in a dog bed. I'm not a savage. Unlike Ava, she's a savage beast, don't be fooled. What I do find particularly fascinating here is this this loyalty line here. And watching it as it crosses both the lifelines, it becomes very sort of distorted and reaches up onto, you know, cuts the fate line here and begins to sort of rise up towards outer Mars. It's sort of pointing towards this this island on the heart line and it's directly connected to this here which is a secondary fate line comes from pluto this is an unavoidable experience i can't help but feel that this is tragic loss in some way and i feel that it's connected to this here and also this, cutting the, the potential for success and happiness, which was their main sort of question. We see here also on the right hand that there is a doubling of the lifeline. And it's it's very common in my younger days of palm reading. I would like the Mars and the lifeline mixed up in, in so much as I would interpret a Mars line as a doubling of the lifeline and actually a doubling of the lifeline is quite rare but we do see it here and what this generally means is it's assistance alongside someone's environment and it's there's aid there in some way supporting a person's life and so what it often represents is I, I've seen it before on the hands of people who have a partner who earns a lot more money than them so they're supported financially um, it can mean that someone has a trust fund there's there's something to sit on there financially they are supported environmentally sometimes it even means they have uh, very wealthy parents now the question in itself success and happiness most people ask will i be rich will i be famous and that's because they don't have wealth or fame the person asks will i be happy they're not so much worried about money and that's likely because this person um, doesn't have to so much worry about money. I think money is already there, but money doesn't buy happiness. And success, too, doesn't equate to wealth. For a lot of people, success has no real bearing on a monetary gain. Now, the fact that we have a shorter Apollo on the left than the right uh, shows us that we have someone who has been has had their happiness taken away from them for some reason and now it looks as though they are building themselves back up again they're strengthening um, what enables them to become happy and successful as well and i noticed that the the tip of apollo is strong it's well developed it's almost when you assess the entire finger as a whole it's sort of almost a bit of a club here and this really shows us someone who is has a, a exceptional artistic ability, appreciation, and creativity. We also see that by the curvature of the headline and, and the length of it as well. But more so the curve is a gentle curve. This really shows exceptional creative ability. This person has a good uh, strength of perspective, a, a flexible mental capability to ask what if. And at first, you know, it sort of appears to fork at the end here, but actually this is a line coming from Luna. This is a, a, another fate line um, that sort of dissipates before it reaches the headline. And it, it's fascinating to me because there's so many differences here between the left and the right hand, and each of these things has their own story to tell. The right hand, I always look for where the headline ends in comparison to the left and the right hand. And, and if you see a headline drooping quite low down on the right hand, um, and it's a bit 
higher on the left that would show that they have um, come out of depression of, of a sort. I mean, at least it's an indication of that. The lower the headline droops, the further and lower that it droops into. Luna shows this inclination towards unrealistic think thinking, fantasy, dark thoughts, imagination. The person is not quite as grounded. So it's a, a key sign of depression. And I actually, I don't see that here. And as I say, I think this person has had had that. I think they have been through that. I think they're coming out on the other side of their self sort of recovery and reparation. What I do notice here is the distinct gap between Apollo and Mercury fingers. And you see it on both the left and the right hand. And in fact, probably greater on the right hand. I don't want to take too much away from this, but this really does promote an idea of independence, of that free thinking, of a, a need for spatial freedom. Uh, a freedom in itself, but particularly spatially. And given that we have here a very creative person, uh, a very sort of artistic, uh, natural uh, beauty and you know, appreciation for the natural beauty and creativity in the arts, I think we have here someone who may well be a dancer. Given the width of Mercury here, their ability to express is strong. They have a, a strength of personality in the way they express themselves. And it's it's not necessarily, when you see a long Mercury finger, it's very easy to sort of say, okay, well, this is someone who's very verbally strong. But it's not all about, when we think of communication, it's it's not all about verbal. That's, that makes up, that accounts for about 7% of how we communicate. A strong Mercury finger could mean one of great many things. And I feel for this person, their physical ability to physically express is very strong. The And this is subtle, but the lunar mount here, you notice on the left hand, take a good look at the lunar mount there. It's not massively well developed. It, it, you know, it's not sort of large or rounded. But then when you look on the right hand, it appears to be just that little bit more well developed as well as obviously Apollo being longer. So I feel this person has grown in their ability to express themselves and through that has enabled uh, some sort of sense of inner peace and happiness. So in part here, I'm already uh, partially answering um, their, their questions around success and happiness. The key to inner success and happiness for this person in particular is their uh, freedom and ability to express themselves. Without that, this person will find themselves caged in, no matter their financial status or their uh, the quality of their physical health, they will not be happy. And I, I zoomed in here to get a good look at the Apollo finger on the right hand, and this is because I wanted to see if there were any uh, potential uh, negative or positive signs here on the tip of Apollo. But I don't see any. Uh, I see, you know, in the fingerprint pattern here, a great, um, again, flexibility, adaptability. It's a very watery sign, this, this loop here. A good ability to work with others at the same time as having this instinctive need for personal space and freedom. Um, freedom of isolation as well to um, be who they are essentially they are a bit of an individual um, they are a bit of a non-conformist as well you know this this is a sort of radical way of um, expressing themselves they're not going to be uh, penned in by anyone else they don't need someone to hold them back uh, when it comes to a relationship a future relationship this is I don't think that's what they're seeking at the moment they require someone who almost just sort of leaves them alone and can just sort of appreciate them and for who they are and strengthen them up without um, being needy or inhibiting them, prohibiting them, oppressing them in any way. I suppose that's what we all need in a partner, right? It is particularly true in this case. Now, one of the distinctive differences I noticed between the left and the right hand is this primary fate line and the way it rises upwards throughout the center of the hand and then begins to reach towards Jupiter. Jupiter itself 
tends to lean towards a very sort of stiff uh, but relatively low set thumb before curving up towards Saturn. And I can tell a few things by all of the things I've said here. Now, firstly, the fate line here, the way it divides the palm in two is a key sign of someone who feels as though they have a, a very fixed destiny. The way it reaches up towards uh, Jupiter, this shows a, a need or there's, there's a desire here to lead in some way, to teach others, to show, to explain. I feel this person is superb at showing others, um, at, at explaining in that very physical way. Here, let me show you how to do this. I think they're very good at teaching in that way. And there is something of a teacher's square here. It's not fully formed, but it's certainly on the way there. And that's on the right hand. Um, and, and again, you know, we see this sort of carving of the palm in two on the right hand, but the fate line doesn't quite curve up towards Jupiter. So what that shows us is this person has a desire to um, aspire to some sort of leadership role or a teaching role or some, some sort of role of authority. However, the right hand shows us the uh, potential here isn't quite on that same sort of path. The stiff thumb seen here and the angle of proficiency here shows us something of a sense of timing and the logic here of the thumb is slightly wasted showing um, a good sense of diplomacy skills. The, the tip of the thumb is ever so slightly, it appears anyway on the left hand, uh, sort of tapering at the tip and this shows a refined taste and and this is in line with what we've seen about the Apollo finger, the tip of the Apollo finger, in particular on the right hand, they developed uh, a good sense of uh, appreciation for beautiful things, natural beauty. Saturn and Apollo, I wouldn't say they're tightly wound together. I don't feel this person, uh, I, th I feel this person has some good, you know, uh, structure in terms of uh, freedom in their life. But they are certainly thinking about the future. The, the Saturn finger just gently leans towards Apollo at the tip. They are consciously thinking about um, how um, they work with others. And particularly at this very moment in their lives, I think that this month, actually precisely right now, is there's a little bit of an obstacle here in the month of June. Uh, again at the end of July and particularly in August work over the next uh, two months, particularly the towards the end of August, there's going to be a bit of an obstacle there. So actually my advice here is to not to work too hard throughout this period. Um, there's, there is, it would actually be more useful to take a step back to consider yourself a bit more at this time rather than throwing yourself into work and in trying to ensure that things aren't going to go wrong or you know, working too hard. Um, this person is a capable planner and I think that's where their strengths lie. I think if you uh, line all of your ducks in a row now, this line probably will start to disappear by the time August comes around. Now, I mentioned this person was a bit of an individualist. Notice the whirl here seen on Jupiter. And we can see a little bit of one here as well. This is a bit of a combination. I mean, it's not entirely clear, but I think I see here what you would refer to as a tented peacock's eye on the Saturn finger. And we certainly see a whirl here on Apollo. Um, okay, so I'll just go through what these mean. The whirl on Jupiter shows a very sort of individualistic um, point of view in terms of their ambition, spiritual matters, how they manage their own ego, their um, their thoughts about their themselves and their spirituality, and how they um, assert themselves as well, I suppose, in terms of authority. 
in terms of their their character these these things that whether the way they do these things are very my way or the highway now this is these are more sort of feelings because we're looking at the left hand it shows um stubbornness it shows a very unique way of thinking and feeling about the self but you know, on the index finger on the jupiter it's more related to matters of idealism and sort of spirituality um and, and how we sort of fit in the world it shows a, a kind of a non-conformist um approach to how they think and feel about uh, the universe i suppose well i need to go back over this a little bit here and i'm not sure i've been all that fair this this world here um it, it shows a degree of a perception and a self-understanding an individual um, perspective of self-understanding they don't trust other people's ideas their ideas are original but they surface organically and again it's another sign of um a need to be free from the societal conventional um you know normal way of thinking people with this marking love their freedom especially from societal convention and have a need to express their individuality now a world seen here on saturn it's it's kept upright somewhat by uh, structure and, and rigidity law and order but there is and also a sort of an inquisitive curiosity about this as well there's a, a deeper understanding that um, there's more to the universe that meets the eye this shows a, a self-organized planner self-disciplined planner someone who is um th there's a good sense of structure and routine around how they uh, assess plans for the future and it's likely as well a good um appreciation for history as well and 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 physical sort of uh, historical structures they might well uh, you know being they've got a little bit of rigidity here so there's a planning around sort of collecting old things they might well be um involved in sort of antiques in some sort of way a stamp collector or something like that now i believe here on the apollo finger we're looking at a world and on the left hand this shows us inherently this person has a need to create an impression their ideas about artistic beauty are quite unique they've probably got an excellent sense of a, a very um individual sense of uh, fashion taste uh, and they probably stand out amongst the crowd now i have noticed here there are some uh, horizontal lines here coming in towards um affecting this person's ability to create and to express and again we're looking at the left hand we don't see this on the right so there's the, um, internal um obstacles here in terms of how they um feel and think about their expressive and creative abilities they have uh, inherently exceptional uh, and um, particularly brilliant creative ideas but they are potentially not focusing um on one thing at a time there's a, a somewhat of an inability here to um constructively carry out and focus on one plan in order to sort of see it through i think as a potential um adhd here i think one of the uh, answers to their questions success and happiness i think ha actually this is kind of an answer for both of these things in going on a bit of a conquest of tying up loose ends of ensuring that all those projects that you've had to shelve uh, for some reason you know they lie dormant in your mind and it's playing on you and there was likely a reason at the time where you had to stop and, and move on to something else but it might be worth going on a bit of a, a project in itself of tying up these loose ends and when i say tying up i don't mean committing more time to these things i mean ending them putting them to bed bury them burn them cut your ties destroy it if you have to 
and move on to the next and make this focus in this challenge in itself because in doing this you will uh, strengthen your ability to focus on one task at a time and every time you're you're tying up a loose end and you kind of become sidetracked by something else don't allow that to happen make this a priority because this will really uh, help um, Im improve that sort of inner peace inner calm that is is required and i think in strengthening this ability to focus on one thing at a time there will be a, a great deal of inner, inner peace inner happiness and success that will come from this because if you can really um, harness uh, your focus on one goal that that goal will become hugely successful and uh, you'll be much happier for it i do think you have a great many friends i think you're a sociable person and i'm not certain i think actually some of the obstacles in your life are as a result of some of some of these influences i think some of the people in your life aren't potentially as i think that some of them are potentially bad influences the more I see here, the more I think that by sticking to one straight and um, linear sort of course, by sticking to the straight and narrow, by avoiding unhealthy social habits, social interactions, and by really focusing your energy on, on one goal at the time and just working towards that one thing. Um, and really sort of isolating from those that are potentially helpful in your life i think that will really this this will really um this this fate line here will start to on your right hand will start to arc more towards jupiter more towards a place of where you want it to be now i don't know what your career is entirely but you would make an exceptional choreographer whatever it is planning plays an essential role in um, what you do and what you're good at i see the success line on the left hand and as it rises up towards apollo the apollo line if you like there's a nice branch here that reaches upwards and you know this, this is an ideal sign and so your idea of what your success should be is, is quite clear and it's strong and it's healthy and positive it's prosperous it's happy and successful but then on the right hand it's it's a, it's a very different sign here and it's been almost sort of cut short your happiness and and with its success because happiness is part and parcel of success to me at least if we can do what we are good at and make a living out of it and enjoy it those three things are the fundamentals of success so they are both you know joined and i can see here this incident that has occurred that um it's it's uh, tied in with emotional disappointment i can't help but feel that at the age of around 42 and i could be wrong about the age i do believe this person lost someone very close to them but it could well have been their partner and i think finances you know were okay after this time perhaps there was insurance payout or something i don't know but this means nothing if we're not happy if we can't enjoy life and so after the age of 42 for this person there began a stage of being reborn anew in some sort of way and it was extremely painful and you can see the fate line and how it's jarred how it's how it's affected and shocked um their path in life was just not an easy one after this time it's faint it's uh it's sort of been bowed by the striking effect of the heart line here and the influences of which can be seen very faintly coming from uh the attachment line here this 
so-called marriage line or union line. And we see it on the left hand internally how this really affected them and it's 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 catastrophic. The success line here, the Apollo line, it rises from the heart line. This is a key indicator of success through a creative or artistic endeavor. And through strengthening the abilities to express um, their worth, their feelings um, in, in expressing physically, it will unlock and allow and enable um, emotional articulation, which actually I think this person is very good at anyway. I think they're an excellent communicator in terms of their feelings. But it will unlock and open up their capacity to um, further express and expand their creative abilities. And in through doing that, they will become happier and also more successful. The key to success for this person really lies within um, removing a couple of irons from the fire and focusing on that one task, assessing what they are good at. And that's, that revolves around uh, you know, something creative, artistic, planning, systematic and organizational. Uh, as I say, a choreographer they'd be superb at. Also teaching, avoiding those unhealthy relationships, cutting ties with people that are not of a positive influence in their lives, and cutting ties with those past projects that may in some way be playing on their minds. Putting those things to bed will really improve the mental health. And all of these things will have a very positive knock-on effect on their success in future. At the age of 56, I can see a distinctive uh, move away, uh, a long distance uh, um, relocating, uh, perhaps, you know, moving abroad. And I think this is this is going to be a new a new life for this person. I think it's going to provide some new perspectives and experiences. But this person really has um, actually all of the answers within. And sometimes it doesn't matter where we move; we will take our same problems with us. So unless these things are worked through. Um, some of those problems will move with them. Uh, I, I feel that they have a strong need, a strong desire, and a plan, actually, to travel in future. And I think that will happen at the age of around about 56. Now, to explain what this square means here, I'm also going to explain what this square means just here as well, because that's a very mysterious and interesting sign. Uh, at least I'm going to try and explain it. This sign here is not altogether all that positive. Squares are protective, and they are positive. Uh, they're pretty much always positive, in fact. But this square here, it can mean that a person is in some way an instrument in their own um, life in terms of they are a potential problem themselves to their own issues in some way. This is a protective marking. It's protecting them from their own demise of the sorts. But the reason why it's there in the first place is not good. So I don't know what this person... There's, there's a great mystery around this person. I can't help but feel I can't quite work this person out. They're very um, secretive and mysterious. There is a doubling of the lifeline, and you know I've already sort of interpreted this as a potential assistance in in their environmental, um, in the way they live their life. But also, it can be seen as a double life. This person may well have uh, a very sort of um, mysterious secondary life they're living. There are lots of influences close to home, and these form squares. And squares are always sort of isolation from society. In the right hand, it's often hospitalization or imprisonment. And so when I see this here, and then I see these squares 
formed here. I do wonder about the possibility of uh, spending vast amounts of time away from society. Now, this square right here, again, indicates, and it's not, it's, it is fully formed, but it's not completely uh, deepened enough to be of, it, of an extreme uh, profound meaning, but I would say, you know, it's worth commenting on, and it shows a very mysterious person. The, the nature and deeds of a person are um, mystifying. They have the ability to do both good and bad. I mean, we all do, don't we? But what I mean by that is it's very difficult to understand um, whether or not a person with this marking is, you know, just who they are and what their motives are. It just adds a, a real sense of um, secretiveness about them. And so these two signs combined, I feel like there's a very sort of secret agent um, air about this person. And in just reading the hands, it's uh, it is a very difficult read, and that's probably why I spent so long on this one. Now, this person already knows themselves. They are highly introspective. I say that because of the long and gently sloping headline, as well as the length to the Mercury finger. People of this nature are always highly, um, you know, questioning, curious, and, and are very aware that the, many of the answers lie within. And and for me, in this reading, that's that's what I'm providing here is that the answers for this person's success and happiness actually lie within. Let me know what your thoughts are on this reading. Maybe you've picked up on something that I haven't, uh, or that you would like me, um, you would have liked me to explain. Um, I think I'm going to stop there. I don't think there's anything more I can really say of any great d detail. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate all your comments, and uh, please subscribe.